a key topic that i want to talk about is marital rape okay you spoke about rape in general how does the dynamics of healing and growth change if it's your partner your life partner who has raped you and again additional question do we also see cases of women raping men here yeah excellent question very hard question and will be a different answer from the legal point of view okay you can give both um tangent is that i worked in rape crisis for around 7 years in chicago i was working as a rape crisis therapist only in chicago for 7 for for a very long time and and studying it in the us ranveer let's start there there is a binary around funding funding goes towards political causes that you agree with funding does not goes to go towards political causes you don't agree with so i had a i was working for a lovely organization that was survivor focused now survivor focused means if you have survived rape assault different from reality though sometimes people who survive things also end up perpetrating things Mm. right it's a cycle of abuse like if it happened to me i may be i may do it to you i may do it to somebody else i may not but sometimes i'm if i'm unconscious and i'm in that cycle it whatever happened to me i will repeat it whatever happened to me i'll repeat it so now this gets very complex because now if i'm married and i'm in love and this person really also loves me and my cycle of abuse is just repeating unconsciously as the perpetrator I may not realize what I have done because I think, oh, it's part of this journey of growth that I'm having with my partner. I did this once, but I will not do it again, or it happened, etc. On the end of the receiver, it is extremely, extremely traumatizing because the thing, the per, the one person that was supposed to be safe for you, in, especially ideologically for your entire life like the idea of that that my wife is my safe person my husband's my safe person which is why they are my life partner when they force themselves on me and don't wait for me to say anything so how does rape play out just to go into it very classic example for play is happening i'm not asking you i am turned on i am putting my body on your body whichever part you are kind of a little bit uh, uncomfortable but you're not able to tell me fully stop many reasons for this maybe you're a slightly submissive person maybe you don't know your body well maybe you just are in love with me and you think this is normal maybe you have always experienced sex which is forceful and violent so you don't know that it's supposed to actually be paced and i should ask you etc many reasons why i don't ask you to stop but i'm visibly uncomfortable and i am just interested in finishing the experience for me okay so i go at it now let's look at male men for if the man is a perpetrator or anybody with a penis is a perpetrator i'm pen- I'm, i'm forcing 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 i'm ejaculating then i'm turning around going to sleep not even checking with you how did you feel are you okay forget it no no this was for me so just shut up kind of thing this is a very violent and very textbook example i'm using of a man being the perpetrator the husband now if it's the woman being the perpetrator and she's the wife she's using the same position that she uses generally that that two lovers use maybe it's the missionary or maybe it's like sitting on top of him whatever she likes she's not waiting for him to say yes no i'm not okay maybe he's squirming a little bit under her and he's saying no actually i'm not in the mood for it and she just goes you're never in the mood for it what's wrong with you Let me just push you a little bit. Now it's okay. You'll enjoy it once we do it. You'll enjoy it. Okay, ha 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 ha, he 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 he. And then suddenly it becomes really painful because that she's really forcing herself and she's turned on. She wants to finish her orgasm. He's actually flashbacking into the help who did that or the driver who came in his mouth or he's flashbacking. He's actually not able to say that I hate this or you're drunk. Stop. I don't like. I don't want to have drunk drunk sex with you. because it's considered normal in a healthy marriage that you know uh, um, your partner can't be unsafe right your partner actually loves you so everything your partner does is f- kind of okay so in so going back to the legal point of it this is very hard to prove these nuances are very hard to prove in court they are very hard to prove with police cases they are very hard to prove with advocates lawyers because the law is looking for more concrete evidence like scar and consent and how many times and so any obviously you don't put a camera in your bedroom right like so this is the 
difficulty of reporting in india it is more severe because in in terms of rep- being unable to report because this is not even considered a possibility in mainstream indian culture that marital rape is even a possibility i would say that's the legal perspective with a little bit of a psychological perspective i just want to take it a little further to your question of healing healing um i would say you know ranveer if i could write like 10 books and like somebody could just like dictate it off of like they could just like write it for me i think it, i would be able to do so much justice to it because there are just so many nuances in the healing healing aspect of this of marital rape broadly also classified into did this end in a divorce or separation or did they stay together i know and such a polarized binary perspective because the reality of that is not so simple yaar i mean at the end of the day i want to be loved at the core of it i want to be loved i've been loving you for 10 years you've done something and you have possibly always been like this and i just ignored it and one day i listened to neha bhat's podcast and i realized marital rape is a thing and it triggers me especially because ranveer is being so empathetic it triggers me that my husband's not like this and suddenly i realize wow i am literally living with an abuser i am not going to just get up and leave because at the core of it i have children i have a family i have in-laws i'm invested in this man man is invested in me and he's an abuser these are the realities of abusive relationships interpersonal abusive relationships which start which have sexual violence within them that's why the healing is again very contextualized one couple may want to be together now the therapist has to be qualified to not bring their own projections in it mm. and say you should leave you should leave the best thing is to do is leave may not be ranveer I am not paying their rent. I don't know what it's like. I need to listen to them. Now does but it's the conflict is there. Like does it mean I just allow this to continue in under my gaze, right? Under my healing gaze. No. The job of the good therapist is to de-escalate and ensure that at least my clients know that this is unacceptable and cannot keep repeating. Now after that point do they stay together or do they leave is something that I cannot control. No system can control. unless there are children when there are children the law has more of a um, authority to say this is what's good for the child this is what's not good for the child but the reality is many of these cases go underreported we we spoke about why so it remains in this gray binary area now how it moves into he- like deeper into healing is child grows up in an environment like this where they're looking at they're hearing the these episodes every night or every couple of nights where your parents are not happy with each other you can see that there is a kind of forceful dis- for, um a, a, a visceral dislike of each other but yet you're sleeping in the same room yet they are coming to parent teachers meeting together and you're growing up with this idea that this is what a normal relationship is okay and somewhere because children are like sponges they are extremely smart very perceptive always mirroring their parents remember children never listen to their parents they are always mirroring in fact sadguru said this so many times which i love what he says about this topic they are always mirroring what the adults are doing in the room so they are growing up with this kind of like intense idea the idea that intense dislike of each other is normal marriage ends up like this somebody hurts somebody life is like this life is like this Do you think that person is, if they're not in an inner, inner workspace, do you think that person is ever going to change their beliefs about this, right? Where are they going to take that belief out? Onto their partner. This is where we then hear people saying, "I'm just like my dad. I thought I was not, but actually, I've ended up doing this exactly." So, again, coming to the healing part, very, very nuanced. Not every uh, therapist should be putting their own projections, but we do, and then the healing changes according to who you get. as a therapist what's the common outcome that you see when marital rape is involved like practically in real human society what ends up happening people not leaving i see mostly the uh, situation being that okay i am going to cry about it i'm going to really like regret that it happened to me but at the end of the day is it such a big deal because police is also asking for evidence i don't have that evidence but does so, the situation get corrected no i would say commonly no i would say it is the rare 0.1% of cases that do get corrected commonly it is more normalized ranveer see 
change is a very difficult thing and we have to understand this as depth people like people who think deeply about the world that it will not happen quickly because it requires a lot of ego investment to be different from who you were yesterday or different from who you were last minute for me to really listen to you and connect to who you are today i have to be egoless you have to be egoless we have to keep our knowledge aside and just connect us to individuals that's when we're going to have a great conversation right this is difficult this is not easy i i have to really work on myself to come to this conscious relationship with myself my triggers my past my future then my wife has to do the same thing the reality of life is most people are still very much struggling for basics so most people end up prioritizing the basics which is are do we have rent are our kids in school then i will suffer typically what happens is the woman ends up taking a lot of shame the man goes into avoidance could there be a couple watching this podcast together Mm-hmm. listening to this and saying hey that's our reality mm-hmm. and then switching up <clears throat> and having a conversation at least i i would say so i mean that's the 0.1% so as a therapist what would your advice to them be that a read self help books that are based and i'm not just saying my book but read read material increase your knowledge base on abuse ziv dynamics so don't just get, um, believe the one thing that you saw think think deeply go towards four five books sit with your now if both your both people are really conscious both people can do this there are so many books and films today that are available on this dynamic go into it a little this, see i'm a de- depth person so i'll always give these deep type of things maybe people no, no, will please. not like it i don't know but get into kind of watching with your partner watching a, a show on this watching like reading a book together listening to another podcast listening to the uh, podcast again making notes so my book i've designed it for people to write like the journal there are questions ans- answers it's like a workbook form so people can actually go into like what age did this memory come up now tell your partner this and partners doing the same so if especially if you cannot access couples therapy which is again why i wrote this that not everyone can afford a therapist like me not i mean somebody trained somebody with a you know a experience abroad it, we also have run our practices we also have to help ourselves so we cannot do free therapy but there is so much need so what ends up happening is that pe- most people choose the middle ground like some self help some professional help if you can do at least that much that you can go into five self help books and maybe tell your current therapist if you are already in therapy hey this came up i heard this thing and it really triggered me and my partner that are we like this together i would say that is so amazing that is way more than most people will ever get self observation 100% hmm and also i would say sorry third step is ask your friends if they have experienced this in their dynamic especially people who are in long term relationships with each other do not ask your single friends that because they will not have experience do not ask single yogis ask grahastha yogis people who have relational experiences what has that been like for them and then map it some people will say no it doesn't work at all like nothing i i i've never had this issue in my marriage etc most people who if you are very good friends and people who are authentic will name not abuse or rape but at least one instance of boundary crossing and boundary crossing is not the same as rape we are crossing each other's boundaries now as we interrupt each other as we think you're saying something it's normal but it shouldn't become abusive where i am doing that to gain power over you or you are doing that to prove to me that you are so amazing and i should only listen to you and i then all the money is with you and i am your slave okay that is where it goes wrong but normal boundary crossing is i do something when we gets upset and we comes back to neha and says you did that thing i didn't like it and neha is regulated enough to be able to listen to ranveer and say okay i don't like that i did that like i'm a little defensive normal defensiveness is normal but after 2 minutes okay tell me what i did okay now if it's happening 5 times and neha still not changing that's when it's getting into difficult territory they say roasting is a love language right now that roasting is a love language thing can easily become uncomfortable for the person who's being roasted so uh 
eventually i had to reach a point where i realized that you have to be very observant about your partner and understand uh, the things that piss them off and also the things that trigger them slightly right like deep levels of empathy uh but again this comes from a place of wanting to give your partner the best possible reality true which i don't know you know if that's a concept goal, for goal. people thank you that's the word i was looking for goal for a lot of people and again i'm talking about being a boy i'm sure it works the other way yep. as well like Absolutely. i'm sure girls also sometimes need to look out for uh, the opposite version of this absolutely okay if you enjoyed this clip from the ranveer show we've uploaded a ton of other clips related to a ton of other topics so explore the channel because there's something for everyone